Hey there golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. Thomas, how are you today? I am doing really good. I'm excited to test the new Ping G710 irons out. Yeah, we got the Ping G710 irons. Um, I think they're replacing the G700 irons, very popular and successful for Ping. And now they've got the G710 irons. Uh, first of all, Thomas, just looking at these, that stealth black finish is really slick. Yeah, I do like the look of the black kind of PVD finish. I also like how the face, how it has that contrast mm -hmm. from that black to the gray to the black there. Mm -hmm. So you can see it helps yeah. line that club face up a little square. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and of course, these are built, the kind of a hollow uh, game improvement design. They're, they're they got the thicker top line, thicker sole, um, built to be forgiving. They're actually 5% more forgiving with a higher launch than the G700. So the performance has been fine-tuned to uh, help those golfers get the ball in the air a little bit. Not only are they built to be forgiving, but they're built to go a long way too. Yeah. So that's the big take point, taking point with this is, you know, they do go really, really far. They're designed to go really, really far. They're, no, they're not stronger than the Ping G700, the previous line. 29 and a half degree loft on, the, on yeah. the seven iron still, but it's still designed to go fly yeah. really, really, really far. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then of course, we need to touch on the epoxy added behind the club face. This has been kind of, this is the really big uh, shift, I think, from the G700 to the G710, is to uh, provide a better sound and feel. And that's with the epoxy behind the face. And I would imagine as we hit shots today, uh, as you had shots today that we're going to see a difference in sound and feel. Sound and feel is probably one of the number one selling points when golfers get to hit mm -hmm. and test golf clubs out. Obviously if it doesn't sound good or doesn't feel very good they're probably not going to go that direction. So I'm yeah. really interested to test the G710 versus say the 700 and see if there's any differences yeah. at all. Yeah, well so Thomas is going to hit some shots uh, and to clarify we know and you probably know as well Thomas has the perfect fit for the G710, but we do know that Thomas is about as robotic as it gets in terms of ball strike. We're gonna hit some shots, Thomas is gonna swing the way he swings, and we're gonna get some, uh, some great information to look at here. Yeah, I can definitely adapt to hit the graphite shaft, no problem. Yeah. Um, the reason why it's the graphite shaft is because we don't have the fitting components yet. Yeah. We're trying to release this, so for basically the day that this club is available right. to market, so we yeah. have a video for you guys to see. Yeah. Um, we're gonna get some fitting components in, and then we can test future-wise with other people that may kind of fit into this category mm -hmm. of game improvement iron. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but for now, Thomas can hit some shots. We're gonna take a look, we're gonna break it down, and uh, we'll give you guys a good uh, overview of the G710 irons. All right, Thomas, we'll start with just the pitching wedge, and then we'll hit seven iron, four iron, and we also have a G700 seven iron for you to hit as well, so we'll make a comparison there, but we'll just start with the wedge. All right, sounds going. good. Hit like five shots? Sure. Yep. And so the, the pitching wedge here in the G710 set, standard loft of 44 degrees. Okay. So I don't know how that compares to something you're playing. Uh, I would imagine it's a little bit uh, less loft than what you're used to for a pitching wedge. It is three degrees stronger. So my okay. pitching wedge is 47 degrees loft okay. on it. So it should be about eight, nine yards different. Okay. Um, I normally carry my pitching wedge about 138, 140. Okay. So you can see, uh, well, last yeah. one was at 148, so, 149. So it's pretty accurate. Yeah. Yep, so pretty accurate with regards okay. to distance. So. Well, after a few shots here, um, what do you think of that kind of dark, uh, the black PVD finish? I mean, it's obviously it's a little unique compared to most iron sets you see, and uh, I don't know how much you've played a black finish of an iron, but uh, what do you think of that so far? I haven't played like a black finish with my irons in the past because I'm always worried about the wear on the club face. Okay. So normally with a black finish, I've noticed a lot of wear marks, kind mm -hmm. of right, white wear marks in the middle. Sure. It's not wearing any faster, it just looks like it is yeah. because now you're seeing the white marks against the black. I do like this contrast, however, because now it's black to gray to black again, so it's not going to show all these white sure. wear marks on the face yeah. there too. So I think, I think that's going to be pretty cool yeah. going forward to... It's not going to look like it's going to wear as much. Nice. Yeah, 
like a robot. 147. 147 again. Yep. All right, um, we can move over to kind of the seven iron here. That was a lot of ball speed. That is a lot of ball speed. So the standard loft for seven iron now, 29 and a half degrees. Okay. Uh, again, I'm sure that's a little bit stronger than, than the set you're playing. Yeah. It's basically one club. One club yeah. kind of okay. stronger than what a normal seven okay. iron would be. Yeah. Carry 192, I normally carry at 178, so 14 yard difference there. So it's a lot of the reason why the ball's gone a little further. Yeah, yeah. sure. Pretty consistent on the distance there. Yeah. What do you think of the appearance now? I mean, obviously it's we're still playing the same set, but do you notice anything that kind of jumps out at you from just from seven iron to wedge? I mean, the biggest thing I'm noticing is I notice it more with the seven iron is the offset. Okay. Is there's a decent amount of offset yeah. on these clubs com compared to what I'm obviously used to playing yeah. with a with a muscle back iron. Uh, I think that's going to help for sure. Players that are having a hard time. Get, getting that club face square at impact okay. it just gives a little bit more time to get that face a little bit square yeah. coming through. So I think that's going to be a great option for players that are looking for a little extra help there. Mm -hmm. um, so I noticed the offset a lot. Um, yes, it's a little bit larger, kind of heel to toe face that I'm kind of used to as well. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I do really like, I'm certainly growing in love with this black finish actually. Yeah. So. <laughs> Might be a little bit left. A little bit. Yeah. Still went pretty similar distance though. So. Just tugged it hair, but uh, just tugged it here. That's probably, to be honest, that's the golf shaft. Mm -hmm. With me having a little quicker transition, trying to use a graphite shaft. Skin my dispersion's okay. gonna be you a might, little bit harder to. I mean that, get, on, that through yeah. four shots, that was still super impressive. If even yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Given the you know, potential of something like that to happen. But uh, yeah, I mean, that uh, that's some pretty consistent, you know, carry distance right there for a seven iron. Um, I mean, especially those first four before you kind of tug the last one mm -hmm. to have it that consistent. I mean, and that's what you want out of, you know, for a golfer that might be in the game improvement category is just to get as uh, high performing, but also consistent uh, iron that you can get, right? Your irons are your scoring clubs. You want to yep. make sure you're going to carry it the right distance every single time when you're trying to drop the ball on the green, if there's a small green, you know, mm -hmm. it can be a little challenging at times. Yeah. Well, let's uh, switch here. We'll go to the four iron. Okay. Just hit a few there, and then uh, then we'll kind of test the G700 to kind of compare that uh, sound and feel and look. Sounds good. Better. I'm really intrigued to see the distance on, the, on this club here. Yeah? Yeah. Now, for someone like you, who, you know, you strike the ball really well and play competitively and professional, um, obviously, this complete iron set might not be a fit, but it's you know it's becoming common now for uh, professionals and really you know elite ball strikers to play an iron like this in their three four iron in their bag because they can get that extra distance and almost use it as a driving iron. You're right. looking for a club that's probably going to go two fifty two sixty. Yeah. Be forgiving, going to have a high MOI. I mean, these when otherwise hitting a right. blade with a three iron, we know how that works out. Yeah. So you know. It's not a bad option. Yeah, yeah. definitely not. And yeah. if you're, again, if you're trying to find something, just get it in the fairway out there, you know, like you said, for some of these guys, 240, 250 with a, with a four iron like this, that'd be the, this would be an option. Yeah. yeah I'll take that every time oh, yeah. off the tee. Yeah, that's about dead straight. Catered it at 240 and it ran out another 20 yards. Yeah, that'd be perfect if I needed to hit it 260 to the corner on a dog leg, yeah. short par four, and give myself a wedge in. Nice. Yeah. That's one thing, especially at a game improvement irons, that you love seeing is how dead straight that ball flight is, too. Because, um, you know, 
obviously golfers playing these a lot of times aren't going to be trying to work it as much. Uh, even players like yourself who maybe you would hit something like this off the tee, you're still trying to just kind of hit it straight, get it out into the fairway. So, yep. And your ball flight here has been almost dead straight on both shots. Two, two so far at least. Yeah. I mean, we're, it, it is only two <laughs> yeah. shots. But yeah. Yeah. It's in the fairway. That's all that matters. <laughs> That was a little bit of a miss hit, so I'm interested to see what happens there. Huh. Interesting. And that smash dipped a little bit, but performance wise and the result of the shot is, you know. <laughs> yeah, it still. didn't quite carry as far as the first two, but still kind of chased out there a little bit. I didn't quite catch it. Mm -hmm. It was a little lower, but good miss. I like it. I might have found myself <laughs> some form of driving iron there. <laughs> <laughs> I hit that real good. Yeah, you did. Oh, it's hoofta. Well, wow, it's a pretty, pretty tight dispersion for a four iron right there, <laughs> going 250 plus yards. Uh, what did you think of, I guess, the look at that too? Because uh, I mean, sometimes with, when you get into the longer irons, on a game improvement club, you kind of see maybe some of that, uh, the sole, you know, the wide sole sometimes you kind of see it. Uh, what's the appearance like at a dress? I did not see the back at all. Okay. So, I mean, I know I've seen that on a lot of game improvement clubs yeah. and seeing that back on the back there. So that's important to note. Um, I got, I grew more and more confident with it every time I hit it because yeah. I was pretty impressed with how straight it was. I was like, surely I can't do that five times in a <laughs> row, but. Yeah, it just basically flew dead straight, yeah. far, dead straight, you know, chased out there mm -hmm. perfectly. So it was a good option for, maybe, maybe a good option for, for a driving iron of some sort. Yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah, so from a fitting standpoint, options, you know, they're endless. It could obviously fit yeah. a player that needs a little help getting the ball in the air. It could, help, it could fit into someone that sure. may be a better player, but looking for a little help with that driving iron category. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right, now I'm kind of curious about this next part here. We're going to have you hit just a few with a 7-iron of a G700. Okay. Because um, I know, you know, we ping, um, the, the, the mission behind these was kind of to create a better sound and feel from the G710, uh, from the G700. So yep. let's, uh, let's test that out and see what we can do here. Sounds good. Yeah, definitely a different look. So when you put both clubs down, did you notice, I know, because one of the things that they were saying too was that the black finish kind of makes it appear smaller. It might not necessarily be a, a smaller club mm -hmm. head, but it makes it appear smaller. Do you notice that? It appears smaller, but yeah. looking really close at it, there's really not yeah. too much kind of difference. I was looking really close at it earlier. Could notice maybe the sole was ever so slightly smaller with the yeah, okay. G710, but pretty much look very, yeah. very similar. Um, just look more appealing with that with that black. Yeah, nice. I tried to kind of save the questions about sound and feel a little bit until after you hit this to kind of get a comparison. So we'll have you hit a couple here, but um, I mean, for what it's worth, the G710, I mean, it was kind of loud. It was firm, mm -hmm. I'm sure. That's what it sounded like anyway. So I guess we, we'll see how it compares to this. We're going to hear that kind of echoing noise yeah. inside in this enclosed oh, area yeah. for sure. For sure. You're gonna hit, anything's going to sound loud yeah. in, in this. Um, let me hit a couple more, but it did feel like it was this maybe just ever so slightly firmer yeah. off the face, but still trying to kind of notice the difference there. Well, the good news is they're going about the same kind of distance there. Yeah. So and the standard lofts, yeah. for what it's worth, are all the same. It so. hasn't changed. Yeah. yeah, it hasn't changed from the G700 to the yeah. G710. So I would expect to be about the same distance. That one sounded louder. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think, I mean, you've hit three, but I think I have noticed a little bit louder in the G700. So the G710 is, you know, a little bit quieter. Um, I think this uh, even applies to all three clubs, um, but I think specifically if we're talking 7 iron, I think mm -hmm. for sure there's a difference, and I think the, it's quieter for the G710. But yeah. yeah, they put about the epoxy kind of back behind the face a little yeah. bit in G710. It's just going to help dampen the sound and feel mm -hmm. just, just a little bit there. Right. You know, it's still obviously a game improvement club. It's still yeah. a hollow body fit club head, so it's, you know, it's going to be fairly loud yeah. in, in general. Um, design go really far and launch really, really high and you know sacrifices is not a blade so essentially right. it's not going to feel like it's forged in a blade or anything like that but you know it's going to be very solid off the clock yeah. base yeah. Mm -hmm. all right let's uh Let's get the verdict then, huh? Let's go sound and feel, you know, overall. Compare it to the G710, what did you think? 710, it felt just like it was ever so slightly softer. I'm talking yeah. kind of minimal. It's really okay. not much difference. It's kind of the same kind of material face. Um, the C300, miraging steel mm -hmm. face with both of them. So it's yeah. gonna feel pretty similar. It did sound a little bit softer. So maybe that's why I was just noticing that maybe it felt just ever so slightly okay. softer. It was kind of do with the the sound and the feel everyone perceives kind of how all well that is mm -hmm. essentially. Right. Um, could you notice a difference while you were standing back there? Yeah, I noticed could... it in sound. Now again, yeah. I'm not hitting, so I don't have the yeah. feel that you're gonna get, but in terms of sound, I think there was a distinct difference. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's, I think that's what they were going for, for sure. And I think they, that epoxy behind the face did dampen at least the sound to me uh, a little bit in comparison to the G700. But uh, just looking at dispersion, you know, first glance here, um, the ball flight was tremendously straight on every club and every shot for even this is including the G700. Um, and then one, I mean, the, the kind of the, uh, maybe it not the issue, so to speak with having you hit these is that sometimes forgiveness isn't really seen as much cause you're hitting it solid every time. But I'd like to mention that shot that specifically that you had with the four iron, we saw you miss hit it still kept that dispersion very tight up there as well. So, that's one thing to note that clearly there is going to forget this pact in these clubs. That's what they're designed for. And they're going to deliver that for you. It's actually really interesting that I hit this, this club. I hit the straightest was the foreign. Yeah, really you notice how it's got these lines here. You'll notice how from this direction, it's, it's straighter. Yeah. These oh, are yeah. kind of wider. So it's really interesting. The fact that I could hit that foreign mm -hmm. that straight. And that was that impressive. Bar. So that foreign display was yeah. impressive because everyone was, I mean, it's not like you were hitting the big draw or fade yeah. in there. It was just dead straight. Which is what you want to get out of the shape mm -hmm. of an iron, but yeah. mm, that was an impressive display. And yeah, that was really, really good. So Thomas, now you got both G700, G710 in your hand. What do you think differences in appearance? We've talked a little bit about each one, but you got kind of the satin finish of the G700. You got the black finish of the G710. Uh, what do you think? You know, Ping claimed that the black PVD finish is going to make it look like appealing, like a little small looking down at it. I would absolutely 100% agree. I yeah. think for me, this looked a slightly more appealing club head to look down at okay. with the black finish versus that kind of chrome satin finish that we've got going gotcha. on. Yeah, that black PVD finish actually provides hydrophobicity, which um, really helps it with the performance in like wet conditions. So like that's gonna help with the turf interaction plus just the, the catch of the ball and the grooves and the release. Um, that, that black PVD finish does provide a little bit better interaction with the turf and the golf ball. So that's another added bonus of that black finish. And it isn't in addition to just that it looks better. Yeah, it's a nice bit of added insurance to know that it's repelling that water off yeah. the club face. And as we've found out, um, some, sometimes you'll notice if you hit it shot with water on the club face, the ball is going to spin differently. All right, Thomas, uh, what did you take away from, you know, looking at the numbers here? Uh, Pitching wedge, seven iron, and four iron. Anything big to look at? Yeah, let's start with the pitching wedge. So pitching wedge, I mentioned my pitching wedge is 47 degrees aloft on it. Mm -hmm. I normally carry it at about 140. Um, we'll notice with the Ping G710, I was carrying at 147. I believe I had the one outlier in there that was the one that was kind of short right. If I mm -hmm. get rid of that one out, we'll notice it was basically 147, 147, yeah. 149, 149. 
So it's basically 148 is how mm -hmm. far I was carrying it. Three degree difference between the two of them, basically doing the exact number. So from a gapping standpoint with wedge to wedge, it was pretty accurate right there. The only thing I did notice is obviously with a stronger pitching wedge was the spin. We'll notice the spin rate about 7,700 RPMs. You know, for me, I would like to see a little bit more spin with the pitching wedge, but we can get that pitching wedge going a little further with less spin and still have stopping power because of the mm -hmm. height and okay. the landing angle that this club was coming at. So it was flying further because it was spinning less, but it still had plenty of stopping right. power. So yeah, yeah, you have you know, less than a half yard of difference between total and carry distance there. So like clearly the ball was stopping uh, pretty quickly, uh, largely thanks, like you said, to the, the height there. Yeah, with the exception of that one shot to the right here, I had a nice little consistent grouping mm -hmm. going about 148 yeah. every single time. Uh, seven iron. So seven iron was really interesting because we'll notice my carry distance was mm -hmm. identical, 195.2, 195.1. So that's really interesting to note. Uh, when I was swinging, let's see how well I did to try and swing the same at speed, 92.5, 92.9. So we'll notice with the G710 is I wasn't quite swinging quite as hard, didn't have quite as much ball speed. Smash factor was the same, so my efficiency was great. The 710 spun just a little bit less, about mm -hmm. 200 RPMs less, um, which is why it went the same distance even though there was one mile, no okay. more, less ball speed. The four iron numbers, yeah. I couldn't believe how straight <laughs> that I had that, had that club. So that's, that's always impressive to see. Um, I believe well, I was carrying like 236 going 253. So for me, I would love this club as kind of like a driving iron to know I'm something out there 250 yards in yeah. the fairway. Um, I do like the fact that it still stayed pretty high up in the air, so it's still flying 110 feet in the air. Um, for something that has less loft, mm -hmm. still gonna stop on the green for me as well. So. Yeah, that was great. It was unbelievable really to see you hit five shots basically dead straight uh, very little movement in the ball flight. I think with the foreign that's the biggest takeaway. So if you're looking at this map here on the left, we'll notice these lines that are kind of separated by the middle. These are five yards apart. Yeah. So this line and this line here, left and right, is five yards left and right of center. Yeah. We'll notice that all five shots that I hit <laughs> with this was within those that, that area yeah. essentially. So very impressed with how straight yeah. that forearm went. Yeah. Not only straight, but there was that one shot that I did miss hit too. Mm -hmm. I was like, I didn't feel right, and still went dead straight. Yeah. So still went dead straight, and still kept up um, in terms of the distance as well. You got the forgiveness, you got the high launch, you got you know five percent higher MOI. You have really anything in a game improvement iron that someone might want. And again, as we saw, dead straight ball flight. You know, if you hit that thing solid, it's going to be right down the middle. Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway is here, I didn't technically fit in, I don't technically fit into right. playing a G710 iron or the graphite shaft, but I think still Ping has knocked it off the, out of the ballpark here with regards to forgiveness and distance with yeah. these particular clubs. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, golfers out there in that game improvement category, clearly the G710 is going to provide you really with everything you might need, so a great option in 2020.